The reverb effect is one of the most used in music production. So what does reverb actually do and how can you use it in your music? Alright, so let's first define what reverb is. Reverb is short for reverberation and it is created when a sound bounces on surfaces around the sound source causing a large number of reflections to build up and then decay as the sound is absorbed. There are several different preset styles for reverb that you can choose. The most important aspect of reverb is how long the tail of the sound is before it fades out. The general rule is that the larger the acoustic space you record in, the longer the reverb tail will be. The reverb sound also depends on other factors like the shape of the room, the materials the sound will bounce on, etc. Here are some of the more common reverb presets you will see in the reverb plugins. Ambience, a very short reverb that adds some depth but not really a distinctive tail, can be great for rounding off a sound. Let me demonstrate the sound of a ambience preset. This is a dry vocal recording. This is a vocal recording with reverb. Room. There are various room presets. Most are small to medium and studio recording rooms are very common. Room presets are great for creating that intimate sound. Very often used on vocals, drums, guitars, etc. This is how a room preset can sound like. This is a dry vocal recording. This is a vocal recording with reverb. Plate. Actually not based on an acoustical space, but an acoustic phenomenon, where you feed sound into a large plate of sheet metal which vibrates and reverberate from the sound. Plate reverb has been a favorite for creating a big vocal sound without the smeary sound you often get with larger hall reverbs. Mainly because plate works as a natural filtering effect on the reverb sound as well. Here's a demo of the sound of a plate reverb preset. This is a dry vocal recording. This is a vocal recording with reverb. Holes and large holes. A whole reverb preset will give you a big, wide and lush sound. For that warm cinematic sound, I recommend a preset based on an orchestral hall or Hollywood style studio recording space. Now let's listen to the sound of a whole preset. This is a dry vocal recording. This is a vocal recording with reverb. Churches and cathedrals, the biggest reverbs of them all, because churches and cathedrals were basically created as large echo chambers. Materials like stone bounce almost all of the sound without absorbing much of the energy at all, which creates a very long reverb tail. This means you get that divine and huge sound from these presets but they often work best on music with few instruments used because the overall sound will wash over you so too many instruments will drown in each other very fast. Now let's listen to the massive sound of a large church reverb. This is a dry vocal recording. This is a vocal recording with reverb. So basically, reverb is a large amount of echoes from all surfaces around you that smear together into what is called a reverb or sometimes a room sound. But reverb does not have to be a room. In fact, you have reverb everywhere. Well, except in space because there is no sound there. But the point is that if there are any surfaces at all that sound can bounce on, you will get an echo. And all those echoes coming from all directions is what creates the reverb. The reverb tells our brain how large the room is and even the kind of surfaces it has. 
For example, a wooden room sounds very different than a room of stone, like a church. There are two types of reverb effects that you can use in music production. The first kind is called an algorithmic reverb, and is basically an advanced mathematical calculation of what different spaces sound like. The second kind is called convolution reverb, and it is based on real recordings in actual spaces. A preset in a convolution reverb is basically like a fingerprint of the acoustic environment it was recorded in. That fingerprint is used to transfer the acoustical data to the sound you add it to. These presets are based on what is called impulse responses, but I simply call them acoustic fingerprints. So each preset in a convolution reverb is based on an actual space. Algorithmic reverbs give you more control over the sound, while convolution reverbs has a more authentic sound. But that being said, there are actually great algorithmic reverbs that sound very authentic even to a trained ear. So which one should you choose? Well, it depends on what kind of sound you want, of course. My personal guideline is to use convolution reverbs as a starting point on acoustic instruments, especially orchestral instruments, and algorithmic reverbs on electronic instruments. That is my personal recommendation, but in the end it's totally up to you. The most important thing in a reverb is not if it is based on algorithmic calculations or a real recording to create the sound, it is the quality of the presets. There are actually super high-end algorithmic reverbs that are used on Hollywood orchestral soundtracks. So there are no rules here, just facts and your creative choice. But the most significant difference is still that algorithmic reverbs give you far greater control to shape the sound even after choosing the preset while convolution reverbs are basically fingerprints, so with convolution reverbs you mainly control the sound by switching to another preset. My name is Mike, and I'll see you in the next video. Do you want to level up your skills and knowledge as a composer and producer and advance on your professional journey in music? Then join my Music Composer Academy it's 100% free to join and you will get instant access to several free courses.